Velvet Buzzsaw is a horror thriller film from director Dan Gilroy, who also directed Nightcrawler back in 2014. Starring an ensemble cast that includes Jake Gyllenhaal, Tony Collette, Rene Russo, John Malkovich, and Stranger Things' Natalia Dihar, it tells a story primarily set in the art industry. After the death of an elderly painter, his works of art are salvaged and then sold for profit, but all his art comes with a price, as all the ones that made profit over him end up in dire consequences. Now, when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I was expecting some sort of just a horror type of movie. When I ended up actually watching it, it ended up being more of a satire on the art industry, along with the lines of a supernatural horror movie. All right, so first one I want to start out with are the pros, obviously. Like I mentioned before, this movie is directed by Dan Gilroy. He directed Nightcrawler a few years back. I saw it on Netflix as well. It was in theaters. It also had Jake Gyllenhaal and Rene Russo. That movie was really well made, well written. What I loved about both movies and what the director did is that the theming is about the same in both, even though they're two completely different stories. Nightcrawler dealt with news journalism and reporting with Jake Gyllenhaal playing a news reporter and he was pretty much recording nightlife in LA and it shows how far someone would go to be willing to go that far to, to get that type of press on the air and the consequences of that whereas here in Velvet Buzzsaw it's in an art gallery and it's with creators curators and it shows how far these people are willing to go to get paintings and get profit off of them and the consequences or in this case a supernatural consequence that they have to face in the end next is the the actors is what I really loved out of this movie I love movies that have an ensemble cast and this one definitely had it Jake Gyllenhaal and Rene Russo were both amazing they both came back for another Gilroy movie Jake Gyllenhaal was I thought he was really great there was sometimes he was a bit over the top but other times he was his usual Jake Gyllenhaal self but he held the role really good and I I hope to see him in more movies I'm glad he's gonna be a villain in the next Spider-Man movie he's gonna be playing my favorite villain Mysterio so I'm looking forward to that Rene Russo was good. I always liked her. She played like a cold-hearted type of curator in this movie, and she held it, that role really well. Uh, the only disappointments I had was I wish Toni Collette had a bigger role in this movie because she, after seeing her in Hereditary, I wanted to see more of her in this movie because she was fantastic in that one. But what she had in this movie was still pretty good. And then Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things, I actually did not, I'll admit, I did not realize that was her till after I was watching it. I was thinking, she looks really familiar. But um, her role with it was really good as well. And then one last thing for the pros, I always look into the technical part of a movie, how it looks, the effects that are used, the lighting and everything. For this movie, this is also, again, a kind of a pro and a con. The pro of it is that the lighting was pretty good for the most part. The landscapes of Los Angeles and California it was, I thought, were beautiful. Whenever they show the art galleries and the paintings in the movies, you have a bits of pops of color, which I really like too. It wasn't as much as I thought it would be after seeing the trailer. I thought it'd be most of it like that, but when it did show it, it counted. Now, when it comes to the pacing of the movie, this is kind of a con, but the pro part of it is that when it was entertaining, it was entertaining, but there were some parts that dragged but when it picked up, it usually picked up at the right times. Though another con was that I also mentioned was kind of a pro was the pacing of the movie. Though some parts picked up, the slow parts were kind of messy. The writing was a little bit all over the place. As I mentioned before, it is an ensemble type of movie with a di different variety of uh, actors and characters. And it's all in how you write it to make it all blend in together really well. I'm no writer, so I'm not an expert. But from movies that I've seen in the past that have such a big cast of actors portraying all these different characters, there's a way to usually balance it out. Uh, a good example would probably be in Avengers Infinity War. I thought, in my opinion, with it being over two hours and having over 20 different characters, that the movie was well balanced and the story flowed pretty good. A few bumps, but, you know, like I said, nothing's perfect in movies. But they did a pretty good job. With this one, it kind of went back and forth to the point where you either thought one character's situation you felt like it wasn't done yet or you were kind of lost. Eventually it would go back to what was going on, but it felt like it could have been edited a little differently. So 
the viewer, or in this case myself, I was a little kind of confused in how the pace was, especially towards the end, you kept going through three different characters, and I wasn't, sh I knew where it was going, but I was kind of like, well, how is it going to go? You know, what's going to happen? But that's something that could have been a little bit better, but I obviously, I have seen worse. So in the end, do I recommend this movie? I say yes. It is a Netflix movie. You're not really paying for anything because you have a subscription, so if anything, you're paying the eight, eight nine dollars, whatever you pay a month, but is it worth your two hours? I would say yeah, for entertainment standards. For technical standards, there's some things that could have been worked on a bit better. The writing could have been a little bit better. It's not a horrible movie. It's not a perfect movie by all means. I give it personally, in my grading scale, probably like 70 to 75%, but it is worth a view for sure. Anyway, guys, that was my review for Velvet Buzzsaw. I hope you like the movie. If you like it or not like it, comment below. Tell me what you thought. If there's any other movies on Netflix that you've seen that you thought were looked good, let me know as well. I'm hoping to review more movies on there and TV shows. I do know we have a movie or a TV show, I should say, called The Umbrella Academy that's coming on there that I do want to review. But in the meantime, this is Ride the Movie Guys saying until next time. <laughs>